Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled, What is the Deep Web? My name is Tim Warner. The Deep Web is one of those $5 techno buzzwords that a lot of people use as if they know what it means, but when you really dig down deep in their knowledge, they don't. So the purpose of this micro nugget is to give us some fundamental vocabulary and tips on accessing Deep Web resources. I'm hoping that this micro nugget will actually spring into several other micro nuggets in which I deep dive into aspects of the Deep Web, if you don't mind the redundancy there. Now, what is the Deep Web? First of all, we see the Deep Web referred to on the web under different names. Deep Web, Hidden Web, Invisible Web, and Undernet, those are generally synonyms. The official definition of the Deep Web is nothing more than the unindexed public, semi-public, or private websites in the world. So these are servers running web server software and displaying HTTP or HTTPS content that is simply not, for many reasons, not picked up by most search engines. Of course, Google and Bing being the main ones, right? If you do a Google image search for deep web, this is the graphic that comes up a whole lot of the time as a useful metaphor on what the deep web means. They say you can see different numbers. This particular graphic, of which I've given you the source down here, says that approximately 4% of the entire content of World Wide Web resources are visible on the so-called surface of the web. In other words, reachable through a web browser and a search engine. But you'll see, like an iceberg in the ocean, the unindexed portion of the web constitutes the vast majority of content. And if you're like me, you're thinking, to yourself, hmm, that's interesting. What can I find down here that I can't find up here? The types of content here, we're not necessarily talking about cloak and dagger, CIA, government operations, dark ops, black ops kind of stuff. We're simply talking about content that for various reasons isn't scoured by search engines. For instance, dynamic content. As we know, we have static websites that consist of just plain garden variety XHTML or HTML pages whose content is hard coded. But more and more now we have dynamic websites that are driven by a database. So those pages are dynamically created and we can play with URL query strings to get pages that may not be intended necessarily for public consumption. And also because of their dynamic nature aren't picked up by search engines. There's also private content. Any site, whether it's a torrent tracker site or just an everyday garden variety message board that requires registration is going to prevent most web crawlers from getting to the content in those sites. Now, I mentioned in the opening part of this micro nugget that many people use deep web incorrectly, and it's true. Strictly speaking, we're talking about deep web as the unindexed web. Now, within the unindexed web, we have sub areas of the deep web, probably the most popular or the most commonly talked about is the Tor network, the onion router network. And this is a network that thrives on anonymity and free speech. What it is, it's an encrypted relay based network of nodes. It's a community supported exercise in anonymity and free speech that supports web content, but you access it in a very different way from traditional HTTP or HTTPS connections using the public DNS infrastructure. So whereas sometimes you'll see people use Tor and Deep Web synonymously, really Tor is just a subset of this so-called Deep Web. And I'm very interested in Tor, and I think you are too. And like I said, let me know in the comments if you'd like additional micro nugget lessons on using Tor. I'm going to close out this micro nugget by giving you some URLs, some methods for accessing the Deep Web resources. First, of course, a nod toward the Tor project. This is the site where you can go to download software to start browsing the Tor network and even become a relay router yourself if you're willing to do so. What most people want to access once they go into the Onion network is a web page called the Hidden Wiki. Now the URL changes for that on a fairly regular basis and of course I'm putting morality and legality aside for a second. The thing about the so-called Undernet or Tor Deep Web is that you can find just about anything you're interested in whether it's legal, illegal, whether it vibes with your morality or violates your morality, it's like that. I mean, we have that on the surface web too, but you'll find some questionable stuff in there for sure. And like I said, I can cover that in a separate micro nugget. As far as 
websites that you can access right now. We have DuckDuckGo. This is an alternative to Google. You can find some interesting results that aren't picked up by Google and Bing and those kind of sites. The focus here is on not tracking you and protecting your privacy. Dogpile and Clusty are what are called multi-engine aggregators. Again, if we're relying on search engines here, you might think, well, we're talking about surface web, but you never know. You might find something interesting here, and then by using URL playing, for lack of a better term, you might find hidden resources. InfoMine has a focus on academic or academia. When you think about it, the history of the World Wide Web, it started with the military and it started with research universities. So there's huge volumes of data that aren't accessible via traditional search engines, but by using sites like InfoMine and even the U.S. Library of Congress, you can find valuable information that you otherwise wouldn't find using public search engines. Finally, if you don't have archive.org bookmarked, you really should. It's the home of the so-called Wayback Machine, where you can pull back partial sites, sometimes full sites, of websites in their past state. It's interesting, for instance, to look at the history of Google itself, all the way back to when it started. You can get cached copies of websites that have been at least indexed or aggregated by archive.org over the years. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.